Thank you, Megan. Thank you so much for arranging this and all your efforts. And to bring a team of seven people from overseas is, uh, is significant. It's really not small. It's really, really very large. And I think we're very um, uh, grateful. Not only are we very grateful, I think we're very lucky. I think we, we get a, a great deal from ISOC Global. ISOC's uh, quite a large organization, and with so many things going on, I can tell you we're, uh, we've been busy starting to organize the 25th birthday um, celebrations. Uh, there is a party in Cape Town and a party in Joburg. They've very much been driven by ISOC Global. And one of, a, one of the, the, you know, the, the things that we had to go through is to find someone to help us to do this. So we co-opted somebody onto our committee to take charge of the celebrations. And the very first thing that they said was, uh, well, one of the first things we do as a chapter is add them into the global list. They've got a great portal and you, you put in the email address of a new chapter officer and then all of a sudden their mailbox just starts filling up. She said she's never had so many, like her mail increased by double just because I added her as a chapter officer on the chapter on the ISOC portal. So there's like heaps of information flowing all the time uh, once you're part of ISOC. And really what ISOC is about is internet society. So I wanted to just kick off by reading some of the emails that I, I got this morning when I woke up. I mean, first of all, I don't know if you know that there are these things called internet shutdowns. So yesterday, they shut down the internet in Togo. So there were a number of emails about shutdowns in Togo and how it's affecting people and where and how and the mobile networks and stuff like that. But one of the other big ones that I, I read this morning, which I think is quite worth reading, <coughs> from a guy in America, Dave Burstein. And there is all these different tiers of ISOC. There's ISOC Global and there's ISOC Chapters. We have ISOC ZA and we have ISOC Gauteng. And actually it all seems to just work and it's really coming together. So what does Dave say? One of the things that's been going on at the global level is that we're trying to formalize or reformalize the relationship between ISOC Global and all the ISOC chapters. So there's been this process of discussion about a new contract that all the chapters have to get involved with ISOC Global. And it's been quite an interesting process that we've been going through in the discussion. So finally this morning I get this email from Dave Burstein. Folks, something remarkable happened in the last three days. Because of the many comments, some off-list work, and I hope common sense by ISOC leadership, the proposal went from, we will decide a final draft, to we will work for consensus. And that's pretty much how the internet works. It's about, you know, at the end of the day, we all come down, it all comes down to consensus. That's how we created the internet, through internet standards, through the consensus-based ITF approach. That's how ICANN works. We move from the ITU into a consensus-based global policy-making organization. And to me, that's what internet society is all about. It's about reaching consensus and working together and connecting each other. So, ISOC ZA, I mean, we've been going since 1998. Um, one of the things that we did a long time ago was the Spammer Bounty Hunter program. Um, and it didn't work, but maybe it did work. Basically, it proved that the law in South Africa isn't very good because we were prepared to pay anybody to take a spammer to court and actually have them, you know, have it criminalized, have some kind of precedent. But in the last, like, since the ECT Act and since we launched this in the early, like, more than 10 years ago, we haven't yet had any criminal go to jail. In fact, I've actually come across a number of stories where spammers have been rehabilitated. And really through internet society and us all working together and, you know, pushing back on spammers, you can actually get them to change their habits. It's not like a normal kind of crime. It's a kind of crime that people can start to see the light if enough people explain to them that this is really not the way to build a, bu build a business. So all these kinds of programs that we've been through, we've learned lessons and uh, we've you know, we've tried to stick, stay, stay a focus on the pillars of ISOC. So one of the things that I think is very important as ISOC South Africa is to focus on South Africa. ISOC Global focuses on global, and ISOC Gauteng fitted very well on looking at training and developing South Africans to participate in the global uh, scenario. I think that's why we get on very well with ISOC, um, ISOC Gauteng. Um, we try and focus on national policy making, 
going to Parliament, submit, making submissions. It's a policy arm of ours. And we don't have enough people that are thinking about these bills and contributing towards submissions to Parliament. We really need more people. We did a lot of it leading up to competition in telecoms. And since then, there's, there's only one or two or three people maybe that have even an interest in policy. I urge you to join our policy mailing list, to, urge our, to join our Facebook group on South African policy because we need more energy there. And there are a lot of bills and acts that are going to affect internet society, and we want to have a say in them. It's important to hear everybody's voices. One of the other pillars that we, we, we focus on is training people, training engineers in South Africa for South Africa. We, we run programs together with AFRINIC and Zacker or Uniforum used to sponsor a training program for DNS training. Unfortunately, we've been staggering a little bit on the DNS training. Changes in the domain name industry have affected the ability to train up more engineers. Um, IPv6, we need to have more training and we need to push that whole education of engineers at the open level, at the standards-based level, as best as possible. And it's an area which we need to develop more and ISOC ZA is focused on. One of the things that we've tried to do in order to disturb that, what, uh, that whole kind of DNS area is to organize the registrars. Part of society is also trying to create organizations and groups. And in South Africa, we have over 400 registrars. And we're starting or we've, we're driving the creation of a, the first in the world registrars association at the national level. Registrars.org.za was mentioned, if any of you are registrars. Um, so, one of the other projects that we're getting involved in, in partnership with AFRINEC, or we're trying to get involved in together with ISOC Global through Beyond the Net, is looking at um, internet statistics and seeing how South Africa performs in, in the global kind of picture and compared to Africa and looking at providing more tools to policy makers to see which policies are working, which policies aren't working, where policies are needed um, at the technical level. So I actually have um, one web page that I wanted to bring on board. It was some information that we discovered yesterday about the internet service provider market in South Africa off the APNIC website. Now, I think we as South Africa, as Africans and as South Africans, we can do better, a better job at presenting this kind of data. But as far as raw data is concerned, there's some interesting numbers here that I picked up uh, that I think we can keep in mind after we've like, looked at the slide. There isn't much more that I have to say. Um, but I think this is worth um, checking out. What have they got here? They've got here looking at ASNs. So looking at the routing table, they've come up with the market share of ISPs in our country. And they've also managed to pull up some statistics about IPv6. I don't know how reliable this information is. I mean, it's how statistically correct, shall we say, because on the right-hand column they've, they've listed samples. But it looks, you know, it's certainly very... Um, useful to be able to see statistics like this. And we, learn, we hope that we're going to be able to present it in different ways, uh, visualize it, that, that becomes quite useful. <clears throat> Can everybody see? Does anybody know who Zol is? Zimbabwe Online. Ah. They have a lot of IP, IPv6 addresses, according to this. 1.2 million V6 users. Um, what about... Everybody's looking at the screen. 
Well, you, you're supposed to be looking at your laptops. <laughs> we've already I've already asked, attention. We've already asked you what is the URL. It was URL. only one slide. We've already we've asked, asked you what is the URL. I only saw it one slide. It's Everybody's looking at the screen. Now we can look down to the laptops. Okay, um, I think I've used up my 15 minutes. I wish you lots of fun. I hope that you have a great day and learn lots of things here at ION. And thanks again for all the arrangement from ISO Global and support and driving. And we're building our internet society. I hope you're all members and long old members and get involved and help with policy. We've got serious new acts in Parliament. We need more people to read them. I know it's not like the most entertaining bedtime stuff, but it's definitely going to put you to sleep if you read it at night.